Hey gang, welcome to New Southern Garden. Uh, today we're at a client's house because actually in the Northeast Georgia area, we're starting to do some personal gardening for folks. And today we have a task that is truly a personal gardening task. The client has this wonderful big leaf hydrangea. It's supposed to be Dooley hydrangea, which is a wonderful blue in acidic soil. But you'll see behind it, there's another hydrangea. That's the one that was planted. And this one actually is a sucker of the original plant, if you will. Now, the idea is that this freebie, this volunteer plant has just popped up out of nowhere. And of course, it's popped up in the wrong place. So we've been tasked to transplant it from this random area to an area in the landscape where it can grow and thrive and actually fits in with what's going on. So when we're transplanting a plant, sometimes it's necessary to trim it back some. You don't have to, you don't really want to, but this one is so cumbersome and in a, such a tight spot that we really need to prune it back. So we are going to find an area above a node where these nice big green buds are make a slight angled cut. Here's another example right here. Get these Felcos in there and give it a snip. Now, of course, the customer is not really going to want all of these trimmings, but we will because <laughs> we'll make more plants out of them. So the next step in transplanting is to rake back all of the mulch that's here. It's great to see a customer who's got nice thick mulch around their plants. Of course, mulch helps to prevent weeds helps to moderate soil temperature and also soil moisture. I don't want to crush any other little plants. I see some great columbine that are starting to pop up. But once we've raked back all the mulch, the idea is to get as large of a root ball as possible. So we're going to come out at least maybe 12 inches on all sides of the plant, working our way actually severing roots you can see there we will be chopping back a lot of roots when we work with a client we've got to be careful like i said of damaging nearby plants i was hoping that i would find the original stem that laid over off the mother but i haven't felt it yet yeah so i like to sort of work and pry just a little bit you know we don't want to damage roots when we're dealing with plants, but sometimes it's just necessary. All right, I think I found something here. Let's see. Now we've got some stones. Maybe I'm hitting some stones. Looks like we had a border of stones around here, so they've gotten a bit misheveled. Okay, now we're hearing some popping of the roots. And of course, the idea is we're trying to get as big of a root ball as possible but we are gonna to have to lift the plant out of the ground, which means the roots have to be damaged. But we are doing this in the late part of winter, which of course is the ideal time not only to plant plants, but is the ideal time to transplant. Oh yeah, this baby is nice and big here. Let's see. So, Okay, yeah, it seems like a very large branch <laughs> may have laid over. Ooh, but this is, this is the moment that we always wait for. Hmm. Let's see what we've done. I think we freed it. All right, Sierra, you help me. What do you think? Looks like some good stems to chew on, huh? Well... Maybe we didn't get as much of the root ball as we hoped, but this plant, because we've chopped it back, because it's just starting to put out growth, is going to be able to regenerate that root system really quickly. All right, so we're gonna take this hydrangea transplant to the area where the customer would rather see it. All right, gang, so here we are at the location in the landscape where the little hydrangea needs to be transplanted. Uh, right behind me, you'll see there's a panicle hydrangea, which is gonna bloom in the summer. Up here uh, to my left, I guess, whatever. Uh, this is another group of hydrangeas, more of the smooth hydrangea or the Annabelle hydrangea. 
And the mop head hydrangea, the big leaf hydrangea that we've just dug out, is going to blend well with these. We're going to triangulate it so we have uh, two hydrangeas further back and then bring this new one closer to the house. So when we're digging these plants in, it's sort of the same process. We're going to rake back all of the existing mulch to expose the soil. And I like to try to do this as cleanly as possible because we'll use this we'll use this mulch to mulch around the new plant once we get it dug in. Now, digging the hole for any transplant or uh, whether you're moving something or taking it out of a nursery pot. There you go, Sierra. The recommendation is to dig a very wide hole. We want the hole to be at least two to three times as wide as the root ball itself. Now, you'll notice when you're transplanting stuff that the root ball <laughs> is not uniform. It's not like it would be in a container. So we at least want to make the hole at least this wide on either side. So we're going to work the soil as much as we can. Ah, the soil here is decent. It uh, has a nice thick layer of dark soil on top, which is what we call the organic matter layer. But then again, as soon as we get below that layer, we see a lot of red clay. That's just something we deal with here in the south. And of course, clay is a good base <laughs> for soil because it can hold on to moisture, sometimes a little too much moisture. So this organic matter layer is going to be worked in. We're sort of chopping up the clods as much as possible. And of course, we're hitting a few roots probably from these large trees. So we'll try to sever the roots however we can. And as we, as we soften the soil, let me pull up some examples here. We want really soft soil when it comes to, uh, to transplanting and digging. You'll see that there are some clods in here that are quite large. I'm hoping to bust up as much of that as I can with a shovel. Ideally, we would not have any clods of soil larger than one inch in diameter. So I have a little more work to do, but otherwise this soil is quite friable. It is softening up really nicely here, but you'll see we still have some of these large clods. Other than digging a hole that is two to three times as wide as a root ball, softening the soil as much as possible, no clods bigger than an inch, the last step is to make sure that your hole is not too deep. A lot of folks think that we have to dig very deep holes, but in reality, let's check the depth here. In reality, that root ball needs to be just as deep as the soil itself. So you can see that we are maybe a little higher than we hope, but it's always better. It's always better to be a little higher than too low. So. We'll dig out just a little bit more, but not too much. As a matter of fact, if we leave a little portion of the plant above the soil, we'll just mound it up. We'll just mound it up around it, and then the roots will be able to go down and grow into the soil without being too deep. Now, you could backfill this plant with a shovel, keeping your hands clean. But since I'm down here, we'll go ahead and throw in the soft soil. I try to use my hands to break up as much of the clods as I can, if there's any large ones remaining. Now, because this plant does not have that classic root ball like you would see in a nursery pot, we may have to sort of pack some soil in around. We're not trying to uh, compact the soil, but we are trying to make sure that the soil and the root makes really good contact. So, once we have all of the soil slightly mounded up around the base of the plant, there she is. Now the last couple of steps, 
is basically to cover up that planting hole or the soft soil that you've just dug, remulch it, and then before you leave for the day, you ought to water it in. Because watering in after you plant anything is going to help uh, sift the, the soil around the root system, or rather settle the soil around the root ball, which is going to help again with that contact of the soil and the root. Anytime a root touches air for extended periods of time, it's gonna dry out. So we wanna make sure that the roots of our new transplant are actually touching the soil and watering in will help with that. Well, gang, I hope that this has helped you learn how to transplant something from one area of the landscape to the other. Uh, this hydrangea is gonna respond beautifully as most of your plants will. You just gotta make sure that they don't mind being transplanted. But otherwise, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to uh, put them in the video below. Like, share, do all the things. And I hope you check us out online at newsoutherngarden.com. Well, I hope you stay well and grow well.